hey guys and a very warm welcome back to my channel avan audio so in today's video i am going to be starting up with a new topic that is going to be delhi sultanat and this is the topic that i have to start after i have covered the topics till the uh, age of guptas mauryas okay and after that we have to talk about actually mauryas are before gupta so we have to talk about what is what we have to talk about now is going to be delhi sultanate and this is a very important topic and all the topics are important and i am going to be uh, keeping it as precise as possible okay so that you are able to understand it well you are able to revise you are able to learn okay so with before starting if you are new to this channel hello everyone my name is avan onjo and this channel is avan onjo and we prepare many videos for ssc for upsc for upsc i have made like many many videos and in depth videos which are required for upsc till the depth uh, you are going to get in any coaching institute i have made many videos and many more are coming i prepared for railways i prepared videos for your banks okay and basically i cover two subjects that is mathematics plus gs in upsc i am covering gs okay and mathematics is more or less uh, kind of similar okay so concepts are similar so i just consider it under ssc exit okay so you can just uh, subscribe to the channel and you can look for all the all the things okay on the channel okay so now let us begin with the topic of delhi sultanate Okay, so when I'm talking about the Delhi Sultanate, so it is basically starting in 206 AD. Okay, and I'm going to be keeping up the notes precise because in history you have thousands of notes. So I'm going to be preparing a a kind of a flow chart. Okay, where I'm writing up all the rulers of Delhi who were there under the slave dynasty. So we are sorry under the Delhi Sultanate. So first off, we have slave dynasty. Okay. so when i am talking about the slave dynasty so i will be looking at how the slaves of other uh, uh, you know rulers or the people who looted india they came to india okay how they set their slaves instead of coming themselves then after this age we have the age of khalji where khaljis are there khalji's rule then we have tughlaq then we have sayyid then we have lodi okay so this is the whole kind of a pie chart that i'm going to be using to start up with my discussion for the topic okay okay so great now let's first of all move on to uh, slave dynasty so in the slave dynasty uh, how did the slave dynasty got established okay so what happened was that there were two rulers okay uh, first of all i'm going to be talking about the ruler which are most like confused that is mohammad gori and mohammad ghazni okay so the first one who came was mohammad ghazni mohammad ghazni is the one who came and he invaded he invaded and when he invaded in 1000 Uh, one thousand and twenty-six A.D. I'm just writing the important information. And where he invaded, he invaded in Punjab region, Punjab Sindh region. Sorry, Sindh region. Okay, and there was a uh, there was a king who was known as King Dahir who got defeated by them. They were they are coming from Arab, and their basic motive was not to. rule india but to loot india okay so mohammad ghazni came how why is he important because he uh, from the point of view of art literature he got some very very important people like al barudi with him he is a scholar okay al barudi and we have other uh, you know many of the sufi saints also came with him so these are the important points that you need to write okay so for that reasons it is very important but otherwise they didn't get any good to india they were there for the purpose of looting india 
okay so they came they defeated the king dahir and then they started looting how do we know about this we know about this because of the chachnama is a book that is written where this events has been discussed and the author is unknown we still don't know who the author is okay great now after muhammad ghazni who came have after muhammad ghazni who came i'm just removing it the tail here i hope you have drawn the chart okay so now i have discussed about muhammad ghazni who came first for the people who still feel confused about it uh, confused with the names of ghuri and ghazni who came first so if i write ghazni so it is g h a and ghuri is g h u u comes after after a okay so you can say that ghazni came first then ghuri okay now let us talk about mohammad ghuri so mohammad ghuri was basically the person who invaded india and he captured the region of multan okay multan region which is like modern day uh, gujarat and haryana region which was earlier called as multan okay and rajasthan region that region he captured okay uh, there was a battle with prithvi prithvi raj chauhan and there were two battles first was won by prithvi raj chauhan which is called as the battle of battle of tarim okay and there is a second battle also with prithvi raj chauhan in which prithvi raj chauhan got defeated and this battle is called as this is battle of tarim 1 okay and then it was second battle of tarim battle of tarim 2 where prithvi raj got defeated and he took over okay he took over in order to now what he did first of all it uh, it is all happening in 1191 ad okay now what he did he left his slave here and one more thing i wanted to tell you before moving forward mohammad ghazni he was the person who invaded india 17 times okay and he has plundered all the temples like somnath okay so people are actually i have seen many people say mohammad ghuri did this but mohammad ghazni did this so you have to be very careful with the names okay so he now coming back to ghuri he left his slave okay his slave was called as his slave was the one who established the delhi sultanate okay and this is how the establishment happened okay so slave rulers were there slave rulers were there and how did they came first one uh, you can say the founder is kutubuddin aibak and you might have heard his name in uh, in connection to kutub minar okay and he was the one who started the project but he was not able to complete it it was completed by itutmish we are going to be studying it okay it was completed by him so he was a very kind hearted person and his capital was lahore now there is a twist to the story why because the second ruler who came let me just remove this one so what is the twist is that although he was a he was the one who who is the first slave ruler kutubuddin aibak but he was a kind hearted person and he was not able to do much why because of his kind heartedness so second one second ruler who came was called as itutmish okay and itutmish was basically the person who is called as the real founder of delhi sultanate so whenever somebody is going to be asking you in exam who is the real founder so you have to mention itutmish you don't have to mention kutubuddin aibak okay okay fine now so he is the real founder now he was the one uh, he he has certain reported points i'm writing chalisa he is having the provisions of chalisa or turkane so what are these these are the organized groups of nobilities okay who are 
who are handed over with a particular responsibility or particular task to be taken care of okay or we also call it as uh, call them uh, like the third day here chalisa turkade and the third day is chehalgani okay so you have to remember these these are asked okay and he was also known for his currency and administrative reforms and he also introduced ikta system so it is also as many times अगर आपको ये नहीं दिख रहा है तो मैं आई क्यू टी ए ये होती है एकता एकता सिस्टम वॉज एस्टेब्लिश बाय एक्सपोमेश एंड इन एकता सिस्टम वॉट वॉज दिस दिस वॉज बेसिकली द सिस्टम ऑफ रिवेन्यू असाइनमेंट टू द फ्यूडल लॉर्ड्स ओके सो देर आर द फ्यूडल लॉर्ड्स टू होम द रिवेन्यू कलेक्टिंग टास्क वॉज असाइन एंड दे हैव टू कलेक्ट द रिवेन्यू from the uh, from the laidoras that they have to give it to the who give it to the king okay so this is the ikta system and this is something that is asked many times in the so you have to keep on remembering it okay moving on moving on now who can third now he had his son and his daughter so sons were not capable enough so he ascended his throne was ascended by his daughter onto the wish of it utmesh itself uh, it was given to razia sultan but as she being a female uh, it was opposed a lot by all the nobilities and his own like uh, uh, utmesh brothers or his sons everyone opposed that you cannot give the throne to a girl okay so there was lots and lots of op- uh, opposition from nobility and uh, like his brothers his family her family so although she was a very very capable ruler but uh, she was murdered by uh, by the struggle and in within the struggle and uh, she was not able to rule much but she was indeed a very talented girl as a ruler okay now the fourth important ruler i'm not writing all the rulers because after razia there were certain weak rulers which we don't have to discuss we don't have to know now we need to know about balban okay so balban was the last in the in the slave dynasty and balban has followed the policy of what is called as blood and iron and this is asked in exam that's why i've written it in a different color he followed the policy of blood and iron he was a uh, kind of a aggressive and a kind of a cruel ruler okay and he was succeeded by again by certain big successors and finally the finally whole the dynasty whole of the dynasty got collapsed and it was taken over by the khaljis now i'll be moving up on to important khalji rulers after taking over of the throne by the khalji rulers the first one who is also called as the founder of the khalji dynasty who was he i hope you all know is mo is pe to koi movie bani hui hai padmavat hai na to khalji dynasty mein sabse pehla jisko hum founder bolte hain wo hota hai hamara jalaluddin khalji जलाल उद्दीन खलजी ओके सो ही वॉज द वन हु इज नोन एज अ फाउंडर ही वॉज टेकन ओवर बाई इज नेफ्यू हु वॉज कॉल्ड एज अलाउद्दीन खलजी ओके सो अलाउद्दीन खलजी वॉज द मोस्ट सक्सेसफुल रूलर एंड ही वॉज अ पेट्रियन ऑफ he was a patron of art and literature okay he was successful in the uh, in the malwa region in the multan region okay and he is a big expansionist he was known for his expansionist and administration is very strong in his administration is very was very strong under his hold and uh, 
he had uh, he has also introduced a land revenue system okay and some important ones like amir khusrau amir khusrau and uh, Mir Hasan Mir Hasan Dalhavi they all uh, lived uh, lived in his court and he was succeeded by certain weak rulers were there okay uh, after him reported dynasty that came was Tughlaq dynasty okay now moving on to tughlaq dynasty so when i'm talking about the tughlaq dynasty so first of all let us talk about the founder who was the founder founder was known as ghiasuddin tughlaq so ghiasuddin tughlaq was uh, the first founder and he reversed all the policies of Alauddin Khalji okay so he reversed the policies and then who came after him Muhammad bin Tughlaq came okay Muhammad bin Tughlaq is the important one he was a scholar he was a big time scholar he knew many languages he was uh, aware of uh, you know many he was very much educated in the fact that he had good knowledge and uh, he was a liberal man because knowledge makes you liberal he was a liberal man he tried to improve the revenue system that is there okay and uh, what happened was that although he was quite aware he had the knowledge but the application power was not good he had many of the controversial projects uh, which didn't happen uh, he, which didn't ended in a happy ending and it was uh, like uh, there were many controversial projects which were not successful under his rule okay uh, so what were certain uh, let me just give you uh, an idea about So let me just give you an idea about my pen is not working. Just give me a second. Okay. Uh, so there were sort of controversial projects like he increased the taxation in the Duab region. Okay, and uh, he he let uh, he actually increased the ten, uh, taxation and he transferred the capital already existing capital from Delhi to Dolabad. Capital transfer, okay. And um, African travelers were there. Certain African travelers like Ibn Battuta was there who visited the court. Ibn Battuta. Many of the revolts were there which started during his time period like Vijayanagar which was a flourishing one and it became independent in 1336 AD. <coughs> Bahamani. Bahamani. It also became independent under 1347 80. Okay, so revolts were there under him. Moving on.
now uh, okay i've discussed with you all the projects that he has done there were 30 major awards that happened okay then after him he was succeeded by the third one who is known as firoz shah tughlaq and he is also an important one because he has he has his appeasement for buildings Billy actually was very rich during his time, and he he led to most of the expenditure done on that only. Okay, so he didn't thought about anything else uh, about his administration etc. But he was already spending all the money, basically major chunk of it on buildings. Okay, now after that there was an invasion by Taimur. and after he invaded he found the sayyid empire the sayyids came now now let us discuss about the sayyids sayyid so sayyid established by taimur founded by established by Taimur and founder is Khizr Khan. Okay, Khizr Khan. Now, um, after they ruled for a very less time, and there were certain uh, local Afghan invasion. Locals of Afghan invaded. Now, as they invaded. there is a there is an establishment of lodi dynasty now we are coming to the lodi part lodi dynasty so lodi dynasty is the last dynasty before the mughal empire in the next video i'll be covering up the whole mughal empire for you guys okay and i'm making small videos instead of covering it in a one go because i have found that people find it difficult to do that instead i'm making up the major topics like i've covered slave dynasty in this one sorry delhi sultanate in this one and in the next video i'll be covering up the mughal empire okay so the founder of lodi dynasty was bahlol lodi bahlol lodi okay and Uh, he set up agra as his capital okay he was a talented man uh, but uh, he was a soft man and because of that uh, he was a kind hearted person so because of that there was he was taken over after Sik- after by sikandar lodi at sikandar sikandar lodi was a very tough man aggressive man and a man who is always there to fight and to expand okay after sikandar lodi there was ibrahim lodi ibrahim lodi and ibrahim lodi uh, he didn't trusted anybody and because of it what happened is that his own his own people like his relatives his family members they conspired against him they called babar to attack they knew about a person called babar and babar was not a person who is already from uh, rajgharana he was a normal man but he had exceptional skills in uh, uh and he was like earlier he was invading the local uh, invasions he was doing then he like he his work also expanded he grew and after his work grew he started to take over to the many of the big regions and they got to know about it and they invited baba to invade with the help of his own people and in a, in this way the lodi dynasty dynasty collapsed okay so this is how it happened now after the lodi uh, the babar babar he came with we all know what he came with the mughal empire so in the next video i'll be discussing up the mughal empire with you and thanks for listening it till here but before that before the next video before me ending i want to do another topic which is a very important topic and this is a parallel dynasty which was going on okay 
this was a parallel dynasty which is going on and this dynasty is called as let me change the color here it is called as the vijayanagar empire vijayanagar empire so how vijayanagar empire it it was a parallel empire it is a well established and well flourished empire and there was good in administration during their time it is established in 1336 i told you under whom under under whom under pitotamesh okay and they got independence along with the bemani kingdom okay so vijayanagar uh, established here established by whom by harihar always asked in exam many times asked harihar and bukka this is a important dynasty okay harihar and bukka were the establishers and uh, there were three type of uh, dynasties under vijayanagar empire and what are the three first one was sangam second is sulua third is tulua sulua and tulua last ruler was first and last rulers are asked in the ssc till the ssc if you are talking about for upsc i'll create different videos these videos are not for upsc although if you want to take an idea i want to have a like major framework created you can watch this videos okay this would help you very much so the last two rulers was was called as arabidu was the last ruler he ruled till 17th century foreign travelers who came in their empire foreign travelers who came during their empire okay like there were many of them nicolo conti known as first domingo second pears third barbosa fourth and abdul raza fifth you have to remember all five of them all five of them <coughs> i'm sorry okay so these five you have to remember important ones okay and they all visited okay and there were the literacy accounts during their time literacy accounts is in the book called as amukta amukta malayada malayada amukta malayada okay written by krishna dev nai krishna dev rai a majestic ruler very important ruler also okay so this is sometimes asked in the exam great okay now um let me give you an idea a bit of the idea about the dynasties that are there okay after this we'll be able to start up with the mogul empire okay so now let's talk about the vijayanagar dynasties as i told you there are three of them sangam solowa and tulowa so the most important one is sangam and i'm going to be discussing all the important points from all the three dynasties i hope you have written this much okay so let us uh, first talk about sangam dynasty so when i'm talking about the sangam dynasty so <coughs> uh there are many theories regarding how this dynasty emerged okay uh some of them included like they were the they have been the they have been established by the feudators and feudators of who of kakatiyas of kakatiyas and of varangals okay and after the fall uh Uh, they started to establish another view says that the there were the few dates of hoyselas and hence you don't have to learn it because it is still not it is still like confused upon and there is no solid uh, solid evidence of a particular point of view to be uh, taken to be true so you can leave this but you need to have an idea okay okay uh 
let us talk about the most important rulers of Vijayanagar Empire under the Sangam dynasty. Krishna Dev Rai, Krishna Dev Rai who wrote Amukta Mal. Krishna Dev Dev Rai or Raya. Okay, Krishna Dev Rai. He belonged to whom? Krishna Dev Rai didn't belong to Sangam. He belonged to Tuluwa dynasty. Okay, he belonged to Tuluwa dynasty, and uh, his other names were other names were he was also known as also known as Yavana Raja. Yavana Raja, Sthi Penacheria, and how do you pronounce it? I don't know, but I have written the spelling. This is, of course, not the name. It was, of course, given by the Greeks, as you can see. Okay, and his uh, he had high intellectual abilities, as I told you. Very important ruler of Tuluwa dynasty. Somebody asks you. To which dynasty he belongs? So he does not belong to Sangam. He belongs to Tuluwa. Sangam is the first one from where uh, Harihar and Bukka belong. Okay. Okay. In his court, he has he has Ashd Diggajas. Ashd Diggajas. Okay. And he also built many stone temples. So these are the important points about Krishna Dev Rai. And in the in the temples, he is also known for very beautiful gateways. Okay. Um, and while I was teaching you about the about the slave dynasty under Ritu Tumish, so I was talking about the independence of. Uh, Vijayanagar Empire, and there was another parallel empire which got independence, uh, and that was Bahmani, Bahmani Kingdom. And there is a rivalry between the uh, Vijayanagar and the Bahmani Kingdom. So let us have a look at Bahmani Kingdom. There is not much to look in it, but I am just going to give you the all the important ones. Okay, so Bahmani Kingdom it was founded by founded by Hassan Gangu, Hassan Gangu, okay, in seventeen thirty, sorry, in thirteen forty seven A.D. Okay, the important rulers included of Bahmani Kingdom included Feroz Shah Bahmani. Firoz Shah Bimani and Ahmed Shah. Okay, and the this is something something you need to know about Bahmani Kingdom. Now coming back to the Vijayanagar Empire, I hope you have written this much. A bit of Vijayanagar is left. Let me just complete it. ये आप बीच में लिख लेना एक point बना के Bahmani का. Vijayanagar में एक और important ruler है जिसका नाम है Dev Rai II. Dev Rai II, very important ruler. He was a Sangam ruler. Okay, and he included Muslims in his armed force. Muslims in his armed force, and uh, he has allotted lands, lands to the landlords called as Jagirds, Jagirds, and he erected many mosques. So you can say that he was a liberal man. Okay. Uh, important characteristics during Vijayanagar Empire was certain kind of administrative systems that are there. Okay, so important characteristics it included Nayaka. Nayaka system. So what was Nayaka system? Nayaka system was basically where the commander of the Vijayanagar army was called as Nayaka. Commander is called as Nayaka. Okay. And he was given an area for administration. Various areas were divided for their administration. Okay. They were responsible for their responsibilities included expansion of agricultural land. Okay, and they are also responsible for 
tax collection okay and they also have to send tributes to the rulers annually and appearing to the court with some gifts okay to express their loyalty okay but later what happened is that these nayakas they started challenging the vijayanagar empire which led to their collapse okay they challenged the internal structure got weakened and that led to the collapse of the of the great vijayanagar empire so vijayanagar empire is very important and with this i have completed the important topics of slave dynasty along with the vijayanagar empire and bahari kingdom and i hope you understood it well now in the next video i'll be starting off with the mughal empire so for that you need to stay tuned and guys please consider subscribing the channel if you like the video because that is very important for us if we are putting up our time for you guys so we need to know that yes it is reaching you it is beneficial for you so i hope you like the video and if you like it leave a like for me so that i can know that you have understood it well like the video if you have any queries you can write down in the comments box below so thank you so much guys have a very nice day bye stay safe stay healthy bye